Salam, Tena Sterling. When most people think of Africa, they don't think of high fashion first. But I do. I'm from a country with rich and ancient culture, tradition, and history. In Ethiopia, we have more than 80 ethnic groups and hundreds of different languages, celebrations, and traditional garments. With such a diverse culture, each group makes their beautiful fabrics by hand. And these fabrics and techniques and the people are my biggest inspiration. They have become a large part of my quest to marry ancient tradition and craftsmanship with global fashion. I work with women weavers who harvest spin and handloom fabric in an ancient way. Women often process the cotton at home. They buy the unrefined cotton from the local market and separate the seed from the, local, from the cotton by hand. And when it becomes soft and fluffy, it's there ready to be traded. And to trade the cotton, we've, women, women use a piece of equipment called an insert that acts as a spinning wheel. And on top of the insert, there is a part called the kasem, which acts as a bobbin for the tray to spool around. So, once enough kasem has been filled, the yarn is ready to be seen to weaver, to weave a beautiful gabi, like a big blanket that everyone has in Ethiopia. Each region weaves and wears fabric, and each of the 80 ethnic groups is unique. For example, this pattern, this pattern is inspired by the Dorze people, traditionally worn by the royalty in the southern part of Ethiopia for over 500 years. And it's usually woven in red, black, and yellow. But now it's more bolder and brighter by integrating the vibrant culture of Dorze people, like their music, dancing, celebration, exciting and happy people with such an amazing skills of weaving. Or there is the, the obelisk of Aksum in the northern part of Ethiopia, which is 1,700 years old, symbolizes the ancient Aksumite civilization and how the Aksum woman wears their traditional dress, how they join the scarves by hand and easily drape it to their body. Their elegancy, pride, and beauty is so mesmerizing. And that inspired me to make what I'm wearing today. Or there is this scarf, inspired by the unique Ethiopian alphabet. The official language Amharic is the only African language that has its own script. I'm a self-taught designer. <laughs> I learned fashion through Google. When I was 16, I was a rapper. I recorded a rap song with Ethiopian music star. <laughs> here we go, here we go, here we go again. I'm back, I'm back to the game, to the rap, to the stage. That's me, Mafi, in the place to be, as you can see. So. <laughs> And I design all the clothes for this music video. And suddenly, the music video and the, vi the music itself become famous in Ethiopia. And I started designing for other Ethiopian music stars as well, which leads me to start my own company and my own fashion label, Mafi. I then learned the fashion business on my own, as we didn't have a fashion school in Ethiopia. But recently, I was given a chance to go to Parsons and the London College of Fashion through an exchange set up by the International Trade Center here in Geneva to work with students, professors, and share ideas. That was a dream come true, and it was a life-changing experience, which brings me back to my, my beautiful weavers. This is Abebech, one of our talented female weavers. We met when I was giving a short training about design and color in local NGO. And before we got started, I asked everyone to introduce themselves. So Abebech, a single mom who lives and works 
with her children and with her old mom, shared her life as a female weaver with us. In Ethiopia, weaving is a male-dominated profession. And women weavers have a lot of obstacles to their making a living. First of all, they are paid less, and they have to weave in between taking care of their families. And when they go to market, they may sell through a middleman who takes a big cut. And to make the buying most difficult, the markets are on Saturday, mostly on Sundays, when a woman cannot easily get away from the family they must care for. So Abbevich's struggle and her beautiful artistry and her weaving deeply moved me. And from that moment onward, I decided to only work with women weavers. Working with them, giving them direct orders for fabrics, allows the women to have a steady stream of reliable income and become small business owners. Abbevich feels safe for the first time in her life. She's no longer is living hand to mouth now. She's taking care of her families and beginning to have dreams of her own, which is more important than anything you can hold. Since last year, we have worked with more than 20 women who weave, spin, dye, embroider, and earn sustainable income. I want to work with more women weavers as we explore their cultures, patterns, techniques, and helping them create small sustainable business along the way. I'm a great believer that we can take our best traditions and culture that are ancient, but also vibrant living, breathing, use them to teach and nourish us. And I believe that we can marry these traditions with the newer, more modern world so that the ancient and the modern, the local and the global, can both benefit and live in harmony. And I would like to shout out to my sister designers. Let's breathe a new life into fashion by changing the way it's done. Because I can see to that time when we think of Africa in terms of high fashion, innovation, and Africa together it will be a cliche. Thank you so much. Thank you.